Hi everyone, it's Hans here, the founder of Cappuccino, and welcome to this latest episode of Flat Whites and Insights, a podcast created to allow a space for open, honest and vulnerable conversations with real people, all over a beautiful cup of coffee. We're here in my home, so I'll be providing the flat whites, and my guests, they'll be providing the insights. So grab a coffee for yourselves, take a moment, and I hope you enjoy this latest conversation. Thank you, take care, and enjoy. Hi everyone, it's Hans here, and welcome to this final episode of Series 1 of Flat Whites and Insights. And over this first series, I've, yeah, I've learned a lot. <laughs> it's been a new experience for me. Um, it's not something I've ever done before, podcasting, but it's something I've had in mind for a while. Those who know me will know I love a deep conversation. I'm really keen to learn about people's stories, and that's a big thing. And I'd like to think those who've watched the podcast will have seen that, that as much as it's got flat whites in the title and as much as Cappuccino, my brand is got a coffee theme um, and coffee branding this wasn't a coffee podcast it was a people podcast and it's about people's stories so I'm just gonna use this final episode just firstly to say thank you to everyone who took their time to join me I had 10 conversations with very different but very unique and interesting people very insightful as well and um, so yeah a thank you to them but also a thank you to everyone who's taken the time to listen or watch or send me nice messages or share it on their social media and just try and promote it and get it out there. It's new. I know these things take time, but to be honest, whatever the outreach, whatever the engagement, the quality time I've had and the quality conversations and the skills I've learned with, with editing and putting it together and just things I've learned about myself have been worth doing it, worth doing series one. So as I say, so with Cappuccino, as much as there's the coffee branding, I'm um, sure you'll be well aware that I am quite into my football and I like to use this platform to raise awareness and use Oxfordshire football clubs, uh, grassroots football clubs to help do this. So I'm currently sponsor at Didcot, as I was when they started. Since I started this series, I'm now a sponsor at Milton United and also Summertown AFC as well. And so, yeah, so I had a couple of guests on this podcast who were from the football world. So I spoke to Alex in episode two, um, which feels a long time ago now. And we spoke about a lot of things. We spoke about football, but we also spoke about anxiety and burnout. So I worked with Alex and that was my first conversation. And it was actually really interesting. So I had expected there to be some surprises come out maybe from this podcast. I expected to get into some really deep conversations with certain people. And there are other podcasts that maybe I thought would be a bit more lighthearted that I thought would be about football, would be about passions. And and so this first one was kind of a, a big introduction to me and it really made me realise that this is the right thing and what I want to be doing because my conversation with Alex, um, yeah, just cemented the idea to me that you never really know what someone's going through. You can't judge a book by its cover. Awful cliche, I know, but people do have a front sometimes, people have a mask and and uh, it can often be the loudest voice in the room which is it is the one that can maybe be having difficult times and, and I'm really grateful, Alex, if you're watching this, I'm really grateful to you for, for your time and that conversation and we worked together and I think getting to know him a little bit better really helped our, not only our friendship, because I would certainly say we're friends, but it also helped our professional working relationship because we just understood each other a little bit more and... Um, that's really a nice thing to have in the workplace or in any walk of life. So, yeah, I'm going to try get the link to this one um, shared now. But if you haven't watched my conversation with Alex, it's it's a really great conversation. He's, he's a young guy um, in his early 20s, but very mature, head on his shoulders. And, and I think it's a really good conversation for anyone to have. And staying in the football world, I also spoke to Jamar or Jam. And he has just joined Salisbury Football Club from Didcot, so he's playing at step three. And he very much had a different perspective, so Alex has been involved in coaching, he also has played a bit and does play, but Jamar very much from the player point of view. And he has 
basically been involved in football his whole life. And I know and have loved football for a long time as well. I know it can be quite a cutthroat business. It can be quite intense. It's not as glamorous necessarily as it looks from the outside. But I spoke to Jamar about the realities of it. Um, he's, we spoke about a recent promotion, of course, at Didcot Town, the club I sponsor, which was incredible. But what was really nice was to hear about Jamar the man and not Jamar the footballer and who he is, not what he does. Um, I'd never really had this kind of conversation with him before. And I was just loved the fact that Jamal was so grateful for the space to do this and to, to share his story a little bit as well. And he really spoke about the importance of faith and family for him and that those foundations really inspire him, they motivate him and they kind of drive him on to be successful. He's, again, only 22, a really young man. Um, the age that I was when I kind of had a breakdown. So um, that that kind of struck me as well in our conversation. Uh, something I didn't maybe expect to come out and come to the surface. But he's, yeah, seems to have, again, he's a really driven, driven guy, um, but just genuinely such a nice man as well. And although he's left Didcot now, um, can't wait to follow his career and just see, see what he does. Um, but yeah, again, would really encourage, if you are young and trying to get into the world of football or... Um, yeah, just maybe giving that one a watch. And, and we did also at the end touch on, um, so Jamal is from Jamaica and we t spoke about his heritage, but also some of the challenges of maybe, um, you know, looking different growing up playing football. Um, spoke about maybe experiences of racism, of prejudice. And, and again, it's not an easy thing to talk about. And the fact that I kind of created a space and we could have this open, honest conversation because um, that's what this space has been about. Staying in the world of performing, um, not quite football, um, but moving on to dance. In my last episode, I actually spoke to Jo Bannon, and she's an old friend, but also she's a professional dancer. And the world of dance is very, very competitive. It's very, very intense. It's not as glamorous as it seems. And it can be very challenging for your well-being, for your mental health. And the conversation with Jo was, was really wonderful, actually. And... Um, particularly her talking about her own experiences when she was younger of struggling with mental health and maybe that imagery of, oh, I don't feel comfortable with how I look, I don't feel comfortable with, with how I look in maybe the dresses and particularly on dance, it's very on show and, and people are judging you. They're judging you for not just your skill on the dance, but the performance. So how her kind of mental health was impacted and how she now is a teacher and really tries to hammer home with her students that when you see online that you're not going to see the reality. You can do a move wrong nine times, do it right once, post that on social media, and everyone looks at you and thinks, oh, why can't I do that? Um, which isn't just in the world of dance, um, but, yeah, it's something that she kind of speaks to her students about. And she also shared the experience of being on Britain's Got Talent recently. Um, she went on with her student, Nathan, who has Down syndrome. And, yeah, it's just a very, very... Um, inspiring and, and wonderful journey that, that she's going on with that student and just making his dreams come true and um, yeah that was very very nice very nice and, and Joe you're amazing um, but yeah for anyone who not not only just dancers but just anyone who's um, wanting to get into the world of teaching or uh, just wants a bit of motivation and, and a feel-good story and showing the importance of visibility as well and disability awareness then please do give my episode with Joe a watch. So yeah, so that's football, dance. Obviously the name, Flat Whites and Insights, and with my brand, it's all about coffee. I've got my Jericho Coffee Trader self-care blend here. And um, we'll get onto that. And five of my guests are from that incredible community. But before I do, I want to just talk about two further guests. So these are Lucy and Chloe. So... They're not from my world of football, they're not from my world of coffee, but they just had really, really powerful and inspiring values, beliefs. I feel they're doing really important things in the world and, and almost would just really wanted to have the conversation for myself. Uh, and, and if I could share that, that's brilliant. So I used to work with Lucy um, two, three years ago. During the time we worked together, um, her father sadly passed away. And I think Lucy was 24 at the time. 
apologies if that's wrong with you, but she was in her, her mid-twenties, so very, very young. I was working for her at the time, so kind of was aware of the situation and, and tried my best to, to support as, as the rest of the workplace did. But you never, again, going back to what I said about that, you never really know what someone's going through. And it's, I like to think it's similar to depression in a way that it's so hard to explain what that feels like to someone who's not been through it. And um, so for Lucy to come on, talk so honestly and so openly about grief, not just her own personal grief, but the work she does now, she works for Cruise Bereavement, which is a, a, ment- a um, sorry, not mental health, it's a grief organisation doing incredible work across the UK. Um, again, Lucy, incredibly inspiring. Um, and I feel that grief is something that there is still a stigma attached to it. Um, although death does happen all the time. Death is something that we're all going to experience and we're all going to go through a close and a loved one passing away so being aware of what the signs of grief are the physical signs as well as the emotional signs and just aware of the help that's out there and the fact that you're not alone going through that um, was incredible so thank you Lucy. I also had Chloe who is a burnout coach so she dialed in from Hong Kong and that was really cool Uh, so burnout is something that I make no secret of it it's something that I have been through, it's something that triggered my breakdown, it's something that opened my eyes to the world of mental health, but it's something I know I'm still susceptible to, even though everything I went through, just the way I am, my mannerisms, being a bit of a perfectionist and and liking to be productive, it, it just means that I do need to watch myself. And the conversation with Chloe was really great, I mean, I had always thought of being burnt out almost at the end. I hadn't thought of the process of burning out. And so that's something that she touches on, touches about how she works with her clients, but also the importance that burning out and burnout doesn't just happen around work and it doesn't just happen around things that you think are negative. You could be putting all your energy into something really positive um, or one area of your life that you just feel like is draining you. And you almost don't realise, but it's it's meaning that you can't function and be your true authentic self in the rest of the world. So very interesting conversation. Um, very, very good. It was via Teams, but obviously Hong Kong's a long way. And um, I thought that was nice. It was a nice full circle moment because I'd actually been on her sister's podcast, Amy, as well. So they're both like brilliant, brilliant people. Um, I'm sure their family are very proud of both of them. Uh, they're, they're brilliant. So coffee (laughs) I feel like I've got here got here in the end Um, but yeah so the coffee community is one that has definitely welcomed me with open arms I'm trying to get out there a bit more and just just meet like-minded people Um, and people who want to use the coffee industry and specialty coffee and cafes and and, and all that to as a vehicle for, for something that's meaningful as a vehicle for raising awareness of causes such as mental health like I'm doing or homelessness and, and loads of other causes but it's it's a really nice space and way to get that conversation to an audience that maybe wouldn't usually be exposed to it or they don't want to just go on a mental health page because that's a bit alien to them. So first conversation around coffee was with Francesca and she dialed in from Croatia. So yeah we've had a few international um, episodes, um, amazing and We'd never actually spoken before that episode. So when I toyed with the idea of doing a podcast, I put out a little post and just asked people to vote, would you be interested to watch? Would you be interested to come on? And Francesca replied and said she'd love to come on. And that was really cool and actually epitomises what she's doing in her space and her values of seeing coffee as a way for people to connect, to share stories, to have a space to offload and just meet meet amazing people so we had that conversation um again we're like-minded we've got um, the idea of connecting people with coffee and actually just this week i met francesca for the first time so she was back in the uk and we just went for a coffee and it was really really nice and i think it is highlighted to me as well that yes it's nice if this in 
this podcast gets views and gets engagement and 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 everything like that but I've made a new connection out of it someone that if I hadn't have gone out of my comfort zone and done this podcast I we might never have had that conversation and then we've already spoken about potentially catching up again moving forward and just supporting each other with our ideas and our projects so yeah that was really nice really nice next up two people that I actually met for the first time at London Coffee Festival so James who is the founder of Farm Boy Brews and this one was really special for me um, I'm going to try not to embarrass you James but when I set up my Instagram page James and Farm Boy Brews was the first brand I saw using coffee to, to raise awareness and it it made me realise that this is something that might work and this is something I can do and it is possible. We always talk about if you see it, you can be it. And so I owe a lot of <laughs> thanks to James for showing me that it is possible. And in our conversation, we spoken about, and James spoke about his story and his experiences with mental health. And I know it's it's not an easy thing to talk about. It's It's something that's still very real for... James for myself and I got that sense on the call and and it was very real and it was therefore I'm so grateful that I was able to create that space and we were able to I was able to be present in that conversation Um, it's something that I think will be very powerful hopefully very um, inspirational for for other young men who who may be aren't feeling right themselves right now um so thank you james and again really looking forward to what you're going to be doing in the future in the coffee space and look forward to catching up soon rob or the pirate barista again someone i met through instagram and then we met at london coffee festival uh would have been last year last april and (laughs) just got on like a house on fire just such a kind guy, um, really genuine. Um, we just clicked straight away. And so I was really looking forward to the conversation, but I maybe didn't expect the conversation to be as powerful for, for myself uh, as it was. So Rob, without showing too much, the link is, is going to be available for you to watch, of course, watch this episode. So Rob, similar to myself, was... Um, his parents split when he was younger, but but Rob has also been through divorce himself um, and has kids, so he's kind of seen it from both sides. and And we spoke about father figures, and we spoke about the impact of that on well being. And for me, it's something that I've kind of touched on before, and in my therapy has come up like about family and the fact that my parents splitting was a difficult time. Um, yeah, it was a difficult time, and. So to have that conversation with Rob was really, really nice. <laughs> really nice. I didn't think I'd get emotional doing this summary, but there you go. It's real conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real conversations. And, and I really recommend um, watching that if maybe you know someone who's having a tough time in a relationship or have been through that yourself or you have parents who've been through that just it it gave me like a new perspective on it and um made me very grateful for that so grateful gratitude that's a nice segue into my next guest who's also from the coffee industry and has just recently gone self-employed and that's jazz who owns and is founder of witch bitch barista again we hadn't spoken before jazz wanted to come on to this podcast so again really really cool that i've been able to reach out to that community a little bit and learn more about myself in the meantime. So she drove up from from Portsmouth in her van, which she does live in, (laughs) more was explained in the episode. And yeah, we've both been through similar experiences of, of having periods of time where we didn't want to live. We've been through times where just didn't have an appetite for life and really struggled to to be grateful for, for anything and just had a very negative mindset. We've both been through periods of time like that. And um, Jazz spoke about how gratitude has really helped shift that for her and shifted her mindset, 
she tries to every day when she can say what she's grateful for. She starts her day with journaling, gratitude and a coffee, often posts on her story as well. And um, again, the, the energy that she came into the room and the conversation with was incredible. Considering we'd never met, um, it, I can just see that shift. I could really physically see the shift in energy and mindset that she has. And I know she's just going self-employed. She's just launched and I have no doubt it's going to be successful because it's an absolute, it would be an absolute privilege and a pleasure for anyone to collaborate with her. And finally, James, another James. James, who is manager of Cooper's Coffee in Marlow. And this is one of my favorite little coffee spots. Certainly when I started Cappuccino and um, have family from around Marlow, the Marlow area. So discovered it and really nice space. And so I was actually really, really pleased when, when James reached out and noticed I was doing this podcast. And then also kind of, I thought I'd ask him to see if he wanted to come on. And he said, yes. And that was really nice and really cool. And, and he kind of spoke about the realities of hospitality and the realities of trying to manage a cafe and making it work. Um, but also we spoke about getting out of the comfort zone and and the importance of a real close-knit group of people. Um, so yeah, we'd really recommend firstly watching that episode, but also if ever you are around Marlow or you're looking for a new place to visit, then um, Cooper's Coffee is, is definitely worth a visit. So yes, that is a summary I want to say brief summary but I feel like I spoke for quite a bit but I wanted to make sure I gave due respect and touched on every guest that that had been on um yeah just even re reflecting on that now um yeah just makes me really proud proud of what I've done proud of what I created proud of what I am continuing to create in this space and I say continuing because as much as I am taking a break now I mean I need to practice what I preach um, I'm sitting behind my self-care blend. I talk about self-care, not selfish. It's It's been busy. It's, it's, it's not been a walk in the park, getting all of these arranged, doing all the interviews, editing it, getting it all out there. But it's been amazing, and, and I really, really have enjoyed it over the past few months. But yes, time to have a bit of a break. I will certainly be coming back with a second series later in the year. I've already got a few guests lined up as well. Um, but if you're seeing this... And I will go out again nearer the time. But if you are seeing this or you watch any of the episodes and you, and you want to maybe have a conversation yourself, share your story, share some insights. And it doesn't even have to be necessarily a pod episode. If you're a bit unsure, we can have a chat. And, and I just want it to be comfortable for you. But I just want to connect and, and have those conversations and give people a space to, to be heard and be listened to and be valued. Um, something which I didn't feel I always had. So yes... Thanks, everyone. Really grateful. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, very grateful for what we've done with Flat Whites and Insights. Looking forward to what's to come. Thanks so much. I've been Hans. And that's a wrap on Series 1. <laughs> <laughs>